This is episode 347 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we are introducing a new segment to the podcast, Listener Q&A. And I'm going to answer two questions today. One about setting boundaries with a mom, your mom, and also why it's important to emphasize intuitive eating for everyone. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show, the only podcast that teaches you how to reshape your mind, not your body, to make your life better, bigger, and bolder, your undieted life. I'm your host, Stephanie Dodier, reformed dieter, nutritionist, and coach. You ready? Let's do this. Hello, sisters, and welcome back to the show. Today, we're launching a new segment for the podcast. It's titled Listener Q&A. We have been receiving questions from you for months, in some cases for years, and we've been archiving them and have been using them to create podcast episodes for you and content for our social media, but we keep getting them. So I thought, you know what, these questions are a perfect environment for me to help many of you. So instead of answering them individually, which because of the volume is nearly impossible for me to do that, and I want to help you. I'm going to answer them on the podcast here. Now, obviously, I am going to keep privacy, so I'm not going to mention names. I'm not going to mention any information that would allow anyone to identify the person. So I'm going to keep it general. I'm going to give some detail and some context to be able to contextualize my answer and to best help all of you listening to this podcast. And I'm going to try to answer as many as I can over the next series of episodes. I do not know how long this series of listener Q&A will last on the podcast. I'm open to do as many as I need to answer all of your questions. If you want to submit a question that has been on your mind for a long time, you can send us an email at info at stephaniedoldi.com. That's the best way for you to get your question on the podcast because my team will organize me. If you DM them to me on Instagram, there's a likely chance that it's going to get lost in my inbox. So info at stephaniedoze.com and my amazing team will get them to me. I'm so excited about this. You have no idea. Teaching and coaching is what brings me the most joy in all of my business. And now I get to do that and help many of you. So I'm going to teach you one thing before we answer the first question, which is a concept called active listening. And I'm probably going to repeat that at the start of every listener podcast episode. Active listening is when you intentionally listen to the teaching and the coaching with the question in mind, how can I apply this to me, to my situation, or to my life? When you intentionally put that thought in your brain to listen to the coaching of someone else, you always find a way, always, I'm telling you, it always find a way to apply that to you and your own circumstance in your life. One of the things that I do with all of my coaching call, I start the call by reminding everyone on the group coaching call of this thought. I always hear what I need. So I want you to keep that thought in mind as I answer two questions today on the podcast. And the first one is a question about setting boundaries, setting boundaries with my mom or your mom. Okay. So I'm going to read the question and then I'm going to go right into coaching. My mom always comment on my body and this is not new since I can remember and I'm telling you, this at least is 30 years. 
My mom, as always, inspected, reviewed, and commented on my body. That I lose weight, that I gain weight, she always has an opinion and pick at my body constantly. And even when I'm thin, she picks at my health. Now that I'm on a journey of accepting myself, I can't deal with this anymore. But I'm afraid. I am afraid that she will get mad at me and start a huge family fight if I tell her not to comment on my body. How can I set boundaries yet maintain my relationship with her? Let's all take a deep breath. I think that question applies to many of you listening today. I have coached on that question or a variation of that question without exaggeration, at least a hundred different women, one-on-one or in group. And that's the first thing I want to coach you on. You are not alone. I am not saying that it's acceptable for your mom to comment on your body. What I'm saying is it's not abnormal in the context of our society and how entrenched we are in fat phobia collectively as a group of people identified as women how entrenched we are in diet culture it's not a surprise that our mom comments on our body when i coach one-on-one on that question and i ask background information and this is my question i'm going to ask you to reflect on has your mom been your introducer your teacher maybe even your comrade in the process of dieting most mom that comments on their daughter's body because it's not as frequent with men or at least it's not in my community have been introduced to dieting by their mom their mom is a career dieter their whole life they're entrenched in their own internalized fat phobia and they at the deepest level of their belief system think that by commenting on their daughter's body, they're actually doing best, quote unquote, coaching they can to their daughter. They're trying to avoid their daughter, the pain, the suffering that they themselves have experienced for most of their life. In their attempts, in their way, commenting on your body is for them a source of motivation for you to be thinner to look younger to take care of your health better or whatever they're picking on in order for you to conform to the standard of society so you avoid the suffering of judgment of rejection of people looking at your body people commenting on your body so in their mind They're doing that out of love because they themselves have lived their whole life with a high level of internalized fat phobia, just like you, right? You mentioned that you have been dieting for 30 plus years, but now you are awakening, you are discovering the non-diet approach, you're discovering the process of undieting your life, you're here, you're listening to the podcast and you're discovering there's another way of living but your mom hasn't. That's the first place I want you and everyone to understand. The second part, I want to go into the world of you and how her comment impacts you. And I want to remind you that triggers, what triggers you are your biggest teacher. And the trigger you're getting from mom commenting on your body is first acknowledging that you you yourself are in a process of self-development of transformation you are rooting for yourself in choosing a different value system in going through the process of 
accepting yourself, accepting your body, changing the way you relate to food, to exercise, like you're doing all of this because you love yourself enough, you've chosen to root for yourself and to see your own possibility. However, your mom hasn't. And it's not your duty, it is not your responsibility to bring her along, nor is it your job to convince her neither. This journey for you is your own personal journey. And part of this journey is building your own opinion of yourself. And that is the reason why, right, that you are being triggered by your mom's words is because you have yet to develop an opinion of yourself, a new opinion of yourself, right? So when your mom say these words, that is your old opinion of yourself. She is meeting you where you were just a few months, maybe a year ago. And in fact, I've said that to a woman recently, and I want to bring this up to all of you. If you and your mom have been together alongside diet culture and dieting for 20 years, and all of a sudden you decide to get off the highway of dieting and diet culture after 20 years of sharing this value system together, like you're the one who's getting off the bandwagon. Like she's like still rolling on that bandwagon that you together have been together for 20 years. So she's like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like you're the one who's changing course, not her. So position that in your mind that it's you who's initiating change. And your mom has not initiated that change in her life and she doesn't have to. You have to be very careful when we make personal development, when we choose to invest in ourselves and believe in ourselves enough to change our value system, change the way we think, we have to make sure we're not doing that from a place of righteousness. I'm right, she's wrong, right? Remember, you were on that bandwagon for 20 years with her by judging her and assigning to her the you're bad i'm right you're judging yourself your past version of yourself so you want to make sure that it's not from a place of righteousness you want to be at peace with making your choice your decision and moving on with your life just on a different path than her and that's the work that's going to need to be done for you this is your own thought work, you're going to have to change your thought about the relationship you have with your mom. This is not her work to do. This is your work. Now, in that period of transition, where you're getting off the bandwagon, right, and you're jumping on a new bandwagon, and you haven't yet built your own opinion of yourself, and you still kind of in that place of like in between the old you and the new you, boundaries may be really helpful. Inside of our Undiet Your Life program, we have a class and a workbook just on boundaries and having hard conversation because it's such a frequent area of struggle for people in our program, we have a tool for that. So I'm gonna take the highlight from this and teach it to you today on how to set boundaries. But know that if you come inside of Night at Your Life, you're gonna have a step-by-step -step class from me and a step-by-step -step process. There's a lot of misunderstanding about boundaries and I'm gonna teach you probably one of the most powerful perspective change that will help you in easier way through setting boundaries with your mom. Boundaries are an act of self-respect. Boundaries are a tool of self-protection from you to you. Now here's the most important piece. Boundaries are not about the other person. They're not about your mom and making her wrong and making her the bad person. 
Boundaries are about you choosing you. It's about you making a choice of focusing on you and your own welfare, but not them. It's not about making them wrong, so you're right. It's about you choosing to create a safe space to have a relationship with your mom that does not include the topic of dieting or your body. And that's very important that you set that as the intentional thought in your brain as you're setting the boundary and having the conversation with your mom about the boundaries. Like imagine that you're gonna set the boundaries. We're no longer talking about dieting when we're together and you no longer are allowed to comment on my body, okay? The key piece about boundaries is that there needs to be a consequence. And that's probably one of the missing element of many times when we set boundaries, we just go to the other person and say, I don't want X and Y anymore. And then we leave it there. That's not a boundary. A boundary comes along with a consequence. So that could sound like this. Hey, mom, I've made some change in my life. I have chosen to no longer attempt to shrink my body. That's my personal choice. And I would ask from you that you no longer comment on my body or bring up the topic of dieting. And if you choose to do so, I will need to walk away from the conversation. I will need to leave the conversation and either take a break, go home, hang up the phone, but I cannot have these conversations anymore. That's the consequence. I'm going to leave the conversation. I'm going to leave the home to protect myself because I can't have these conversations anymore. If you are in a group setting and you're trying to, if you're like an example, you talk about a family setting and you want to set the boundary and you're in a group, you may need to like divert the conversation, right? Because you can't set the boundaries with 15 members of your family about dieting, but you may have to divert the conversation or you may have to go take a bathroom break so that you're not part of that conversation anymore. When people, this is the key about boundaries, when you set a boundary and making sure the conversation is not about them being wrong, but it's about you making different choices in your life and setting a consequence. The key thing is acting on the consequence you set. So once you have that conversation with your mom and a week later you meet her for lunch and out of habit, she chooses to make a comment on your body, you're gonna need to leave the conversation. You're gonna need to say, hey mom, you have just trespassed the boundary I communicated to you a week ago and you're commenting on my body. So right now I'm going to go to the bathroom. We're going to end this conversation right now. I'm going to go to the bathroom, take a five minute break. And when I come back, we're going to start on a new topic of conversation. And if you choose to bring it up again today, I'm going to have to leave the restaurant. That's the hard conversation that needs to happen with boundaries. I hope this is helpful for that setting boundaries, having the hard conversation and taking action on the boundaries that you've set is how you build your self-confidence is when you're having these action from you to you and you're choosing you, your own safety, your own comfort over the other person. That's how we build our self-esteem. Okay, I'm gonna go to the second question that came in. And this is about intuitive eating. And the person says, I am new to intuitive eating and on diet your life. And this has been life-changing. I'm sharing your podcast. I am sharing what I'm learning from the podcast with my friends, but I'm getting a lot of push back. People either think it's only for people who have an eating disorder or they think it's not quote unquote healthy for everyone. Thank you. 
This is such a great question, and I'm going to coach on it into two way. Number one, I sense a level of trying to convince people, right? You've discovered intuitive eating, you discovered on dieting your life, and you're like, oh my God, this is changing my life. Everybody's going to do like me. And it's normal when we are experiencing so much benefit from something that we want to share it with the world and convince everyone to come on the quote unquote bandwagon again, like us. It's completely normal. You love those people and you want what's best for them. I want you to think about when you were dieting and you discovered the latest diet, imagine it's keto five years ago and you're like, oh my God, it's keto. Everybody's gonna be keto. Are you having that same approach with intuitive eating? And to the people receiving that, does intuitive eating then just sound like your latest diet or your latest wellness plan? Just ask yourself those questions. My advice to you would be, don't try to convince everyone or anyone <laughs> at all. Make this a different journey for you. A journey for you that only is about you. It's not about trying to get everybody on the same bandwagon as you. This journey is going to be done completely different. It's about from you to you. And approaching it from that different perspective will land you in a different place six months down the road, 12 months down the road. Let your own transformation, the way you lead your life, the way you talk to yourself, the way you transform how you're showing up into the world because of intuitive eating, be the conversation starter. Don't quote unquote, shove it in people's face. Let them ask you, hey, I noticed that X and Y is different in your life. Why? What's been happening in your life? What are you doing? Let that happen instead of you trying to righteously shove your new way of living in people's face. There's such a thing in psychology as phases of readiness. There's five phases for people to engage into a transformation. I'm not going to go through all of them. But when people, enough to say that when people aren't ready for a transformation, you showing your transformation and what's happening to you is actually very counterproductive into themselves, moving themselves towards making a decision to change their life. It actually set people's back when we try to convince them. It's very counterproductive to how the brain function. So not only is it not good for you, but it's not good for them. So make this journey your own journey. Now, as far as benefits of intuitive eating, I wanna say this. I did a podcast a few years ago called The Lies of Dieting. I think that was the title. So it's podcast 286. So that podcast dived into the science of why dieting fail. So you may want to go back and listen to this. And these are pure statistic and research on why diet don't work. But again, don't do that from, oh, I need to learn this so I can shove it in people's face. But instead, for you and you putting that information in your brain, so you can operate your own life from there. Now, as far as other benefits of intuitive eating, there is a ton of science backed up evidence to intuitive eating. There's over 120, as of last year, <laughs> studies that were done on measurable outcome of intuitive eating. So I'm gonna list, but know that if you go to www.intuitiveeating.com website, the website from the creator of intuitive eating, you will find a link to all the research backing up this information. So 
Here's a few outcome of becoming an intuitive eater and living as an intuitive eater for a certain period of time. It lowers HDL cholesterol, it lowers triglyceride, it lowers rate of disordered eating. It is true that intuitive eating was originally created for recovery from eating disorder. That was the very first edition of intuitive eating 15 years ago. And then gradually over the last 10 years, the creator of the intuitive eating process have been adapting it for the general population. So it is still used in eating disorder recovery process, but the way that I teach it here inside of Undiet Your Life, it's an adaptation for the average population. So what happens in the case of the average population, we prevent rates of disordered eating. It boosts the self-esteem. That's probably not a surprise to a lot of you. It increases your relationship to your body image. It increases your satisfaction of life. It increases your well-being. It increases your optimism. And it gives you coping skill with food and beyond the food. So yes, intuitive eating is for everyone. I'm going to end this. It is absolutely true that everyone should know about intuitive eating. In fact, being an intuitive eater is the natural state of eating for humans. Like if diets weren't invented, is about 150 years ago, 150 years ago, everyone was an intuitive eater. It wasn't name intuitive eating because it was just eating. But then, in the late 1800, beginning of the 1900, dieting came along. Voluntary food restriction came along. And then the need for us to create a process in the 1980s to recover a natural state of eating became necessary. And that's why the 10 principles of intuitive eating were created is was to bring us back to the original state of eating. So what's interesting, think about that for many of you in your life, there's probably a person, most likely a man or a person identified as a man who's never dieted. Maybe it's your partner. They never dieted their whole life. They don't understand why you need this intuitive eating coaching thing. They're like, just eat, because they never had the process of dieting in their life. They're just naturally intuitive eater. So they don't understand they're disconnected from your journey because of what your relationship to food happened over the last 10 and 15 years and all the damage that was done to it. They don't understand why you need this intuitive eating thing that person is an intuitive eater. They just don't call it that. They just say, I eat food. That's it, <laughs> right? Yes, everybody should know it, but for some people, they don't need it because they already are intuitive eater because that's that natural state of eating for human. So that's it. That was the first ever listener Q&A. I tend to talk a lot. So I tried to constrain myself <laughs> As much as I can over the next volume. This is volume one. I don't know how many volume I'm going to do. Try to make my answer the more concise as possible. But that also gives you a sense of what we do inside of Undiet Your Life and how we coach. So I hope this serves you. You can send me your question and I'm going to add them to the list and we're going to keep doing those episodes. And I would love to hear from you, by the way. If you listen to this podcast and you think, wow, this is a, such a cool format of podcasts, let us know, either by social media or by email. Let me know. I love the new format. And then that'll tell me if we want to keep going for many, many volumes. I love you, sister, and I'll see you on the next podcast. If you are loving what you're learning on the podcast, you have to come and check out Undiet Your Life. This is where we get to hang out together, where you get the individual help applying the concept thought on the podcast while learning new coaching tool that will make your life even more amazing. 
It's also where you get to apply the learning to think better, eat better, and feel better and create your undieted life, your better, bigger, and bolder life. Go to stephaniedoze.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join us inside of Undiet Your Life, and I'll see you on the other side.